This PowerPoint presentation is going to walk you through asking the research question and helping you refine the question that you will focus on for this course. So first, I want you to think about shifting the way you conceptualize yourself. Most of you come into the course with a great deal of um, clinical expertise that you bring with you that's going to inform you as the scientist but your thinking needs to shift and the way you're going to talk about the problem of interest is going to shift from that of an expert clinician to that of a scientist You're going to incorporate in your critique and your searching of the scientific literature different disciplinary approaches. You're going to use whatever you can from bench scientists or the hard sciences to inform the way you approach your conceptual or substantive area of interest. And you're going to include the social, behavioral systems and educational scientists as appropriate. We're also going to consider translation science in this course, and that includes T1 to T4. NIH has reconceptualized how science works, and T1 is translating what's learned with animal science or basic science to application with humans, and then T2 is taking what's learned in those animal studies um, and from those preliminary kind of pilot studies with humans to translate to efficacy studies. And those are your randomized controlled trials where we begin to see if things work when compared to an attention control. And that then um, is T3. And then T4 uh, is when we take what's learned in those efficacy studies and do effectiveness research and say what we learned in those randomized controlled trials can now be translated to the community as a whole. And one of my former colleagues at Arizona State University used to say from bench to bedside, from bedside to uh, the um, community and from community to the curbside. And then we also are wondering um, about the effects then of moving that to policy. All of this um, work should start with a theory. And so a theory is a set, set of propositions consisted uh, of um, definitions and how these concepts or constructs relate to one another. And it sets out those relationships um, or variables um, or relationships between those variables and presents a systematic view of the phenomena and how it works. <coughs> and it explains that phenomena by specifying which variables are related to which and how they're related. So as we're defining quantitative research, quantitative research is a systematic, controlled, empirical, amoral, public, and critical investigation of natural phenomena. It's guided by theory and hypotheses about the presumed relationships among such phenomena. So the principles of this systematic and controlled quantitative research is ordered so that the investigators have critical confidence in the research outcomes. So what are some of these principles of the empiric or the quantitative research? The subjective belief must be tested against the objective reality. So we have a hypothesis, we conduct an experiment to test based on our observation whether or not that hypothesis is true. It's easy to make a mistake because we tend to believe in things so much we might exaggerate or overgeneralize. 
So that's where the peer review concept comes in. And you need to have your work critically evaluated and critiqued by the non-believers to make sure that we stay objective. What makes it amoral? The re results are not subject to moral evaluation. The results are not bad or good. They're just results. And we do need to consider criteria of reliability and validity so we know how reliable and valid the findings are, not that they're good or bad. And the methods of science are subject to the principles of morality. So Dewey defined the scientific approach as having a problem, an obstacle, or an idea creating a hypothesis based on a research of the literature and what's known, deductively reasoning, and then testing the experiment. And then you come up with your results and a reasonable explanation about whether or not you um, were able to prove or disprove your hypothesis. So how do you think this works? for nursing science. We've also talked a little bit in here before about this idea of generating knowledge for practice. And we've talked about sort of the stair-step approach to generating this knowledge. And we've talked about it starting with exploratory research, which can be more qualitative and then descriptive research, which might be correlational, and then experimental or quasi-experimental research. <coughs> Leading to the clinical trials and the effectiveness and evaluation research, and then <coughs> practice. So your process for identifying a research question is to start with a topic of interest, examine the literature including the theoretical, practice, conceptual, and scientific literature, and then come up with a broad statement and it's refined to the research question through the process of looking at the importance, feasibility, the sample population available to you and the targeted sample population, your rationale for trying this particular approach, and the variables that you want to examine. There's four types of research objectives. In quantitative research, we can do descriptive, we can refine a measure, we can explore relationships, or we can compare different groups. So, quantitative research examines the relationship between variables or examines how variables exist. Descriptive or correlational studies examine the variables. Exploratory um, experimental studies examine the relationship between variables and may establish one variable, how one variable influences another. Predictor variables are your independent variables and they predict or cause a given event. In, in intervention research, the independent variable is the treatment and the dependent variable is the outcome. And the response or the effect of the treatment is um, what that outcome is. Your defining variables are conceptual definition describes the variable in general terms without reference to how it will be measured. The operational definition answers the question of how you're going to measure that variable. The final step then in delineating a research question is to clarify the objective. So you're going to have a hypothesis, a specific aim, a purpose, or a research objective. The problem in the hypothesis, the problem statement, it should be simple, clear, and complete. If you want to solve a problem, you must know exactly what the problem is. And you want to use, a, um, for a research question, often um, an inter 
interrogative statement that asks what relationship exists between two or more variables, although um, it's not always done that way. So there are some criteria for a problem statement. It must express a relationship between two or more variables. It should be stated clearly and unambiguously. And it can or cannot be in um, a question form. Must imply possibility of em empirical testing. So you have to have some operational um, definitions of the concepts of interest included. So a hypothesis actually takes it a step further and tells us what we think the relationship between those two variables are. So it can be a declarative sentence, statements about the relationship between variables, and have clear implications for testing the stated relationship, um, such as measurable or potentially measurable um, differences expected.